Okay, people, let's get started with this one. Let me just share the screen. Uh, just hold for a second. Okay, people, so we are starting with this one. So let's get started. Let me get everything straight over here. And okay, it's all good. November 2021, paper 53, question number one. The 26 members of a local sports club include. Mr. and Mrs. Khan, and then son Abad. So let me first underline. There are 26 members of a local sports club, and there is the Mr. and the Mrs. Khan and their son. The club is holding a party to celebrate birthday, but there is only room for 20 people to attend. In how many ways can the 20 people be chosen from the 26 members of the club, given that Mr. and Mrs. and the son must be included? Now it's very simple. We have 26 people in the club and we can only have arrangement seating capacity for 20. Now out of these, these three people, Mr. and Mrs and the son, they are part of that club. So they will be included. So just reduce it by three. And therefore we are left with 23. And the seating will also have to be reduced by three and we are left with 70. So basically out of 23 people, we need to accommodate 17 guests. And the answer is simple. It's about NCR combination. So therefore, 23C17. Let's use a calculator. 100947. That is the answer for the spot. So the question hardly took us two minutes for us to complete it. So the first question is done. Question number two. And let me just get started. Okay. Now let's start reading it. November 2021, paper 53, question number two. The question says Lakeview and Riverside are two schools. The pupils at both schools took part in a competition to see how far they could throw a ball. The distances thrown to the nearest meter by 11 pupils from each school are shown in the following table. So this is the data for Lakeview and this is the data for Riverside. Now, first of all, what are they asking? Draw a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram to represent this information with Lakeview on the left-hand side. So we have to draw a back-to-back -back stem plot and lake view should be on the left. That means river view will be on the right. Now, the first thing that we should check is the data arranged in ascending order, 10, 14, 19, 22, 26, 27, 28, 30, 32, 33, 41. This data is arranged in ascending order. So 10, 14, 19, they belong to one category, one class interval. 22, 26, all the way till 28. That's the second category. 
30, 32, 33, the third category, and 41, the fourth category. What about the reverse side? It's not arranged in ascending order. The lowest value that I see is 18 over here, and then I see another 18, and then I have a 20 over here, and then a 21, and then a 23, and then a 24. I see a 25 also, another 25. And then what else is there? I see a 36, 37, a 30. So it's 30, 36, 37. And that's it, nothing in the 40s. So let's start the drawing process. So let me draw horizontal lines. So I'll be drawing four rows. Why am I drawing four rows? I'll just tell you in a short while. This is the stem over here. So now the numbers are ranging from 10 all the way till 41. So I need one over here and then a two and then a three and then a four. Lake view on the left and river side on the right. So lake view will be written in orange. So this is 10, 14, 19. So this is zero, this is four, this is nine. And then we have two, six, seven, two. So this is two, this is six, this is seven, this is eight. It's not two, it's eight. And then in the three series, I have zero, two, and three. And then there is a one over here. What about the river side? I have 18 twice, that's over here, over here, that's 18, 18. And then I have 20 and 21 and 23 and 24 and 25 twice. And then I have a 30 and 36 and 37 and nothing in the 40s. So I need to write the key for each. So I'll write four slash one means 14. And what is the unit? Also write that. So this 14 is basically the distance. So this means 14 meter. And what about the other one? One slash eight means 18 meters. So now this is completed. What do we need to find now? Find the interquartile range of the distances thrown by 11 pupil at the Lakeview School. Now, first of all, there are 11 students, 11 divided by two is 5.5. Round it up, that gives us the sixth value. That means the sixth value is the median value. And then there are five values smaller than this, five values greater than this. The median of these five values will be the lower quartile. The middle value of the bigger five values will be the upper quartile. So let's go and first locate the median. That is the sixth value. So first of all, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the median value. So let me write median over here. And then let me focus on the five small values. One, two, three, four, five. This becomes the lower quartile, nine slash one. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. So two slash three becomes the upper quartile. So the lower quartile is 19 and the upper quartile is 32. So let me just write it down. So the lower quartile is 19, the upper quartile is 32, and we are interested in interquartile range, which is upper quartile minus lower quartile, which is 32 minus 19, which comes out to be 30. So this question was basically just about drawing and then calculating the interquartile range. This is completed in approximately six minutes. So now two questions are down. Let's move to the third question. Okay. Let me get started. November 2021, paper 53, question three. Let's read this question. 
the time taken in minutes by 360 employees at a large company to travel from home to work are summarized in the following table. These are the class intervals, actually the class boundary because it's ending at the same value and starting from the very same value. And these are the corresponding frequencies over here. So basically what we have over here is a frequency distribution. And based upon this frequency distribution, we have to draw a histogram. Now, first of all, what needs to be done is let's calculate the class width for each class interval. This is five, this is five, this is 10, this is 10, and this is 20. And the corresponding frequencies are given over here. So let's use the formula for frequency density, which is class frequency divided by class width. So this is frequency of a class and it's dividing by class width. So therefore 23 divided by five, that comes out to be 4.6. Let me write FD for frequency density. And this divides to give us 20.4 and the other one is 13.5. The other one is 7.6 and the last one is 1.2. Now frequency density goes on the vertical axis and the class intervals or the class boundary, they go on the horizontal axis. So let's start the counting. The highest value of frequency density is 20.4. So let me look at it. Even before that, let me just draw the horizontal and the vertical axis. So therefore, this is the horizontal axis that goes like this. And the vertical axis is going this way. And then let me count the squares. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So basically, if I choose this as a two, so two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 10, that's 20 and 22 and 24. So this is perfect. So let me write it like this. So this is two, this is four, this is six, this is eight, this is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and 22. This is for frequency density. That is what is written on the vertical axis. And on the horizontal axis, we'll simply write the time in minutes and it's starting from which value? It's starting from zero all the way till 50. So let me start with zero. So this is zero and this is 10 and this is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 is not needed. I'm just labeling it. So now for for the first one, we have zero to five and the height is 4.6. And then five till 10, the height is 20.4 and so on. So let's get started. So let me first mark 4.6 on the vertical axis somewhere over here. So this is two, this is four. So 4.6 would be four point something like this. Let me just mark it. This is four, this is five. So 4.6 is somewhere in the middle. So let me uh, get a rectangle and between zero till five. So zero till five, it goes something, this is five and something smaller. So that's how it's plotted. For the second one, that's five to 10, the height is 20.4. Five to 10, the height is 20 and this is 21 and 20.4 is something like this. And then 10 to 20, it's 13.5. So 10 to 20, it's 13.5. So this is 13. And a little bit up, that's 13.5. 20 till 30, that is 7.6. So 20 till 30, that is 7.6. So this is 6. And then this is 7. And 7.6 is somewhere over here. And the last one is 30 till 50. That is, has a height of 1.2. So 30 till 50, not 60, that has a height of 1.2. So this is two and 1.2 is somewhere over here. So that's how this histogram is completed. And the calculation is already done over here. 
Now let's move on. Let's calculate the estimate of the mean time. For estimate, we have the class interval zero till five, and then uh, the other one is five till 10, and then 10 till 20 and 20 till 30 and 30 till 50. So these are class boundaries. I need the mid value for each one of them. So this comes out to be 2.5. This comes out to be 7.5. And what is the other one? That is 15. And this is 25. And this is 40. And then we have the corresponding frequencies, which is 23 and 102 and 135 and 76 and 24. And we have the formula X bar, which is sigma Fx over sigma F. So basically take the X, take the F and multiply and divide by sum of frequencies. We know that sum of frequency is 360. So therefore, let me write it out. Therefore, X bar is 2.5 into 23. And this is 7.5 into 102. And this is 15 into 135. And this is 25 into 76. And this is 40 into 24. All this added together, divided by 360. And using a calculator, we get the answer to be X bar equals to 15.9. This is given correct to three significant figures. So that's how question number three is completed in approximately seven minutes. So now this is done. Question number four. I'll just hold for a second. Okay, so let's get started with this question. That is question number four. Hold for a second. So let's get started. November 2021. Okay, there's a problem with the screen sharing. Hold for a second. Start it once again. Let's share. Okay, I'm starting now. Let me just double check. Yes, working. November 2021, paper 53, question number four. The question says, Raj wants to improve his fitness. So every day he goes for a run. The time and minutes of his runs have a normal distribution with mean 41.2 and standard deviation 3.6. So let me write this information down. X follows a normal distribution, mean is 41.2 and standard deviation is 3.6. Inside the bracket, we write variance. 
The first part, find the probability that on a randomly chosen day, Raj runs for more than 43.2 minutes. So probability X is greater than 43.2. Probability Z is greater than 43.2 minus 41.2 divided by 3.6. Using a calculator, this simplifies to Z is greater than 0.5556. Now the rule is Z greater than a positive value is one minus probability Z lesser than this positive value. So we have to go to the table and we have to read the probability. So phi of 0.5556 is coming out to be 0.7108. So let me do the subtraction. One minus 0 0.7108 is coming out to be 0 0.2892, which will be rounded off to 0 0.289 for this part, correct to three significant figures. That is the first answer. Let's focus on the second part. Find an estimate for the number of days in a year on which Raj runs for less than 43.2 minutes. So we just calculated probability X greater than 43.2 is how much? That is 0.2892. Therefore, probability X lesser than 43.2 is how much? That is, uh, hold for a second. I just made some calculation error. Just hold for a second. Mm, let me just grab my calculator. Uh, so this is 365 into point. 7108. So this is point 7108. Okay. Okay, let me just go back. Second. Okay, now I'm recording once again. <clears throat> now it's asking for an estimate for the number of days in a year of 365 days on which Raj runs for less than 43.2. Now what we just calculated over here, that was greater than 43.2 and the unrounded value is 0.2892. So let me write it first. Probability X greater than 43.2 is 0.2892. Therefore, probability X lesser than 43.2 should be one minus this value, which will be this value naturally. That is 0 0.7108 and that is what we are looking for but we are not just looking for the probability. We are looking for the expected value, the expectation. So the expectation, the formula is NP. Basically, we are saying that Y follows a binomial distribution in which 365 is the number of trials and the probability of success is 0 0.7108. So when we calculate the expected value, that is 365 into 0 0.7108, this answer is coming out to be 0.259.4. Now, either we write this thing as 259 days, or we write this thing as 260 days. We have to give the answer as an integer, as whole number of days. Both answers are acceptable. Now let's look at the third part. Now it says, let me just reduce it. So now it says on 95% of the days, Raj runs for more than T minutes. 
So probability x greater than t is 0.95. Therefore, we have to standardize. And remember that x follows a normal distribution 41.2 and 3.6 squared. So first of all, for 95% probability, the corresponding z value is 1.645. So therefore, let's standardize. And we will write probability z is greater than t minus 41.2 divided by 3.6 is 0.95. Probability z is greater than a value and it equals to 0.95. The z value is right over here. But we have to take care of the positive negative sign. The rule is whenever the probability is greater than 50% and there is a greater sign, the z value is negative. Now let's take this fraction and let's equate it to this. So therefore, this 3.6 is there. I'm just making it more visible. So therefore, this is t minus 41.2 divided by 3.6 is negative 1.645. t minus 41.2 is negative 1.645. Let's put it inside a bracket into 3.6. Therefore, t is 41.2 plus negative 1.645 multiplying with 3.6. So therefore, t comes out to be 35.3 minutes. That is the answer for the last part. And the complete question is done in around five and a half minutes. Okay, so four questions are down. Let's move on to the fifth question. There is a question over here. Let me double check. Uh, your voice seems to go ahead of the video. Uh, yes, can't help that because uh, sometimes the broadband Wi-Fi connection, it fluctuates a bit. So when you will see the recording, that recording will be more exact. Okay. So I've just answered that, that is done. I'll just hold for five minutes.
Okay, I'm back. Uh, now let's get started with the question. Which ones have we completed? I think three is done. Four is also done. So we are moving to five now. So we will start with question number five. And let's get started. November 2021, paper 53, question number five. The question says a security code consists of two letters followed by a four digit number. So there will be two letters and then there will be a four digit number. Now it says the letters are chosen from A, B, C, D, E. There are five choices for these two letters. The digits are chosen from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out of seven, we have to choose four. No letter or digit may appear more than once. An example of a code is BE3216. Now, first of all, repetition is not allowed. So repetition is not allowed. That's out. Uh, let me correct it. Hold for a second. One six. Okay, now let me get started. So the first thing is a letter cannot be repeated. That means it's a question of permutation because it's about arrangement and repetition is not allowed. First of all, how many codes are there? So we need two letters over here and we need four digits over here. So first of all, any one of the five, any one of the four could occupy the space. And what about the digits? Any one of the seven, any one of the six, any one of the five, any one of the four. So five into four into seven into six into five into four. And when we multiply it out, this comes out to be 16,800. Now, there is an alternative way also. I can use this function NPR and I'll write 5P2. That simplifies to 5 into 4. And I'll write 7P4. 7 from 7, I'm choosing 4. So 7, 6, 5, 4, that simplifies to this. I'll multiply it out and the answer is exactly the same. That is 16,800. Now let's move to the second part. Now it says, find the number of different codes that includes the letter A or the digit five or both. Now, let's say I have the letters A, B, C, D, E, and then I have the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now let's, Consider the possibility in which A is not there. Let's consider the probability, possibility in which five is not there. So basically out of these four, I'll be selecting two. And out of these six, I'll be selecting four. So therefore the answer for this one is four P two. And the answer for this one is six P four and is there, multiplication is there. Therefore, this comes out to be 4320, in which there is no A, there is no 5. Now, when we eliminate this option, what options do we have? It would either have the letter A or the digit 5 or both. So therefore, the answer of part A is 16,800 minus the possibility in which there is no A and no five, which is four, three, two, zero. When we do the subtraction, this comes out to be 12,480. That's the answer for this part. So that's the simplest way of calculating this. Now it says, let's look at this part. A security code is formed at random. Find the probability that the code is DE followed by a number between 4,500 and 5,000. So basically the question is just about this, 4,500 and 5,000 because this is fixed. 
So why worry about it? So therefore, we have different possibilities for four digit numbers. Let me write some possibilities. I have the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's between 45 and 5,000. So it could have four, five and four, six and four, seven. These are the three possibilities. So therefore, numbers starting with four, five, numbers starting with four, six, numbers starting with four, seven, the first two digits are fixed. How many digits are we left with? We are left with one, two, three, four, five, any, any two digits. Maybe four, five is used up. So one, two, three, six, seven. Maybe four, six is used up another five digits. So therefore, any one of the five, any one of the four, any one of the five, any one of the four, any one of the five, any one of the four. Basically, this is 5P2 in all of them. The value of 5P2 is 20. So therefore, this is 20, this is 20, this is 20. The total adds up to 60. So now, without any restriction, the answer of part A was 16,800 codes can be formed. And we are looking for this one. This is the favorable outcomes. If I go to the definition of probability, these are the favorable outcomes. These are the possible outcomes. That's all the possibilities that we can have. Therefore, what about the probability that is 60 divided by 16,800? That simplifies to 1 over 20. Leave the answer in the fraction form because we don't have to worry about accuracy. Now, this question is completed in six minutes. So we are done with question number five. Let's move to question number six and let me just get started with this okay <clears throat> now this looks like a comprehensive question over here okay. november 2021 paper 53 now there is a problem with this hold for a second Let me just stop share. Mm, just hold for a second. Let me just think of the alternative. Let me just. Just need to wait a bit. Okay, let me just double check. Okay, I think this is better. Let me get started. November 2021, paper 53, question six. Let's read this question. In a game, Jim throws three darts at a boat. So Jim is throwing three darts at a boat. And what else is it asking? This is called a turn. The center of the boat is called the bullseye. The random variable X is the number of darts in a turn that hits the bullseyes. So now it could be zero or one or two or three. The probability distribution of X is given in the following table. It is given that expectation of X is 0.55, find the values of P and Q. Now, first of all, we know that some of probabilities 
should add up to one. That is the first thing. So therefore 0 0.6 plus P plus Q plus 0 0.05 equals to one. Therefore P plus Q adds up to 0.35. This is equation number one. Basically this is one, this is 0 0.65, the difference is 0 0.35. The second equation is about expectation. Expectation is sigma xp. So what we do is that we take the values which is zero and we multiply it with 0 0.6, take one, multiply it with p, take two, multiply it with q, take three, multiply it with 0 0.05 and equal it to the expected value, which is 0 0.55. So therefore, this is p plus 2q plus 0.15 is 0.55. So therefore this difference is 0 0.40, this is p plus 2q. So now this is equation number two. Now let's solve these two simultaneously. Let me write p plus q. Uh, just hold for a second. Now let's solve these two. Just waiting for the azan. Okay, let's get started. Let me just double check first. It's all good. <clears throat> so let's solve these two equations simultaneously. Let me write the orange equation over here, which is P plus Q equals 2.35. Let me change the sign of the orange equation. So this is negative P, negative Q, negative 0.35, add it up. So 2Q minus Q is Q, and this equals 2.05. And therefore, if I plug in any equation, let's say this one. So therefore, P plus 0 0.05 equals 2.35. Therefore, the value of P is 0 0.30. So we found the value of P, we found the value of Q. Find variance of X. For variance of x, we need to calculate expectation of x square, which is sigma x square multiplying with p. So now we have zero square multiplying with 0.6. We have one square multiplying with p. The value of p is 0 0.30. We have two square multiplying with q, which is 0 0.05. And then we have three multiplying with 0 0.05. 
So using a calculator expectation of X square is coming out to be 0.95. Now, in order to find variance of X, that is expectation of X square minus square of expectation of X. This is 0.95 minus 0.55 square. Using a calculator, this comes out to be 0.6475. This answer is exact, so leave the answer as it is. That is the variance. Now let's look at the spot. It says Jim is practicing for a competition and he repeatedly throws three darts at the board. Part C, find the probability that X is equals to one in at least three of the 12 randomly chosen turns. Now let me go to the table and let me look at the probability when X is equals to one, that is P and the value of P is 0 0.30. So over here, let me write Y, follows a binomial distribution, 12 is the number of trials and probability of success is 0 0.30. This I have obtained from the table. So from the table, we know that probability X is equals to one is P and P is 0 0.30. Now it says at least three. So probability X is greater than or equal to three, which is too much to calculate. One minus probability X is less than or equal to two, which is one minus. Let's calculate it. Probability X is equals to 0, 12 C 0, and then two brackets, and then 12 C 1, and then two brackets, and then 12 C 2, and then two brackets. So what goes inside the bracket? First of all, this is the success 0 0.30 over here. And then we have the failure 0 0.70 over here. What is the power of success? Let me just write it down. So this zero goes over here and this one goes over here and this two goes over here. And the difference between 12 and zero, this is 12 and this is 11 and this is 10. So now we have to use a calculator to calculate all these and then subtract from one. So finally, the answer is coming out to be 0.747 correct to three significant figures. So that's the answer for part C. What about the next part? Now it says, find the probability that Jim first succeeds in hitting the bull's eye with all the three darts on his ninth turn. Now, what is the probability of success? Hitting the bull's eye with all three darts. Again, we have to go to the table with all three darts. This is the success. So now, first of all, let me write the success probability over here is 0 0.05 or 5%. Therefore, the failure probability is 0.95 or 95%. Now, Jim first succeeds on his ninth turn. That means this is W follows a geometric probability distribution. Success is 0 0.05. That means on the ninth turn, probability X is equals to nine. That is failure raised to power of eight. Success raised to power of one. So this is 0.95 raised to power of eight into 0 0.05. Yes, you have to use a calculator. This comes out to be 0 0.0332, correct to three significant figures. Someone can also work it out that there is failure. How many times? Eight times. And then there is success on the last time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is why it's raised to power of eight and then multiplying with success, which is raised to power of one. So that is the answer for this part. The question is completed in eight minutes. So now this thing is done. Let's move to the very last question over here. And let's focus on this particular question. Okay, let me always double check. Okay. Let's get started. 
November 2021, paper 53, question 7. The question says, box A contains six red balls and four blue balls. Box B contains X red balls and nine blue balls. A ball is chosen at random from box A and placed in box B. A ball is then chosen at random from box B. Complete the tree diagram, giving the remaining four probabilities in terms of X. Now, first of all, let me write down for box A, for box A, we have six red and four blue balls. For box B, we have X red and nine blue balls. Now, first of all, the total over here is 10. The total over here is X plus nine, but we will be taking one ball from A and then placing it in B. So it will be increased by one. That is the first thing. Now, let me go to the tree diagram. And for each, let me first write the denominator, which is X plus 10. So this is X plus 10, X plus 10, and X plus 10. That is the first thing. Now, let me go back over here. Now, if I'm choosing a red from here and then a red from here, the red is X, but because of that transfer, the X will increase to X plus one. So let me write X plus one over here. The same as the scenario, if I choose a blue from here and then a blue from here, so this nine will be increased by one and this will become nine plus one. Now, what else is there? What about if I choose a red from here and blue from here, this nine will be unchanged. So over here, let me write this nine as nine. Or if I choose a blue from here and a red from here, so this X will not change. So this X will remain as X. Now let's double check. X plus one plus nine, that is X plus 10. So X plus 10 over X plus 10 is one. This is all perfect. So X plus one is there, nine is there. X plus nine plus one is X plus 10 divided by X plus 10, that is also good. So this is all done and dusted. That's how this is completed. Now let's look at the second part. Show that the probability that both balls chosen are blue is this much. So a blue and a blue. So all we need to do with is this. So let's take four over 10 from the first blue and then the second blue. So this is blue and a blue that is nine plus one over X plus 10, which is 10 over X plus 10. So now these two tens will cancel out and we are left with four over X plus 10. It's as simple as this. Now let's move on. Let's look at this part. It is given that the probability that both balls chosen are blue is one over six. We just calculated it. That is X over X plus 10. This is, this is X over or four over. This is four over, let me just. Hold for a second, let me correct it. Both balls chosen are blue is one over six. We just calculated it. The question is asking, find the probability that the ball chosen from box A is red, given that the ball chosen from box B is red. Now this will come later on. This is for five marks. I first need to find the value of X. So let's scroll up and let's look at the answer that is four over X plus 10. This four over X plus 10, this is equaling one over six. So 24 is X plus 10, therefore X comes out to be 14. So this is what we get. Now let's read the spot that the ball chosen from box A is red, given that the ball chosen from box B is red. So now box B is red, what are the options? It could be red, red, or it could be blue, red. So red, red is this much. 
Now, let me first simplify this probability. Now, X is 14, remember that? So therefore, six over 10, this is red and then a red. This is 14 plus one is 15 and 14 plus 10 is 24. This is 15 over 24, leave it as it is. This is for red, red. What about for blue and red? So for blue and red, this is four over 10, multiplying with X over X plus 10, which is 15, 14, actually X is 14. So this is 14 over 24. So basically this is six, this is 15, this is four, this is 14, the denominator is 240. So this is six into 15 plus four into 14. So six into 15 plus four into 40. Let's double check. Yes, it is. Divided by 240, divided by 240, this is red, red, and this is blue, red. Now let's look at this question. Find the probability that the ball chosen from box A is red. So red, red goes in the numerator given that the total goes in the denominator. Box B is red. So first of all, let me write the given part that is a sign of conditional probability. The given part goes in the denominator. So we have six into 15, that is 90 divided by 240. And this is four into 14, that is how much? That is 56 divided by 240, that goes down. This is red, red, this is blue, red, and what goes up? This red, red goes up, and this is 90 over 240. So therefore, let's simplify this. So this is 90 divided by 146. This is the answer in the exact form, but the examiner has asked for three significant figures. So let's divide 0.616. This is the answer given to three significant figures. That completes this tree diagram question and it was done in seven minutes. So now this completes the whole question. It's all done and dusted. So that finishes this paper. See you in the next class.